Hi folks, today's video is going to be quite quick and short. It's really just in support and it was intended to link off a GitHub page, which I'll post the link below the video, to source code or program that I wrote many years ago. And this actually helped sort of launch me into my IT career. The principle is the same today, even though the equipment is different. Look back then, this was like the mid 1980s to late 1980s. We didn't actually have desktop PCs, well certainly not in most offices or anywhere else. And where I was working, we were doing shift work. So the guys often had the question, if you look at the calendar year, this is obviously this month's now December. But if we were, for example, here on the Friday, people would want to know, for example, on Christmas Day, what shift are they working? Are they going to have a rest day and be off? Or have they got to work? Maybe New Year's Eve, for example. Here you could see it would be, for example, maybe an afternoon shift, which is great. You're off for the evening for New Year's Eve. So the problem was we didn't have Google search. We didn't have computers with easy to use spreadsheets. None of that sort of thing, really. And what you're seeing over here is an emulator of my old HP 41 CV calculator that I had, a Hewlett Packard. So I actually got this when I was in university. And... I realized, you know what, this thing actually you can program and if you put the code into it, you could sort of calculate and work out if today's date is such and such and you're on this specific shift. Give me a future date and I can tell you, you know, what you're going to be working for your birthday or whatever the case is. And this was quite, actually quite a hit. So wherever I went, you know, people kept coming to ask me if I could tell them, you know, when they were going to be where and what, what day, what shift they were working. So obviously a little bit later when I moved on elsewhere, this sort of followed me. And when the new computer unit started up for our work, my boss actually called me in and said, right, you're gone. You know, go to the computer unit. They want to see you again. And off I went. And that's where it all happened. But the point is today. So look, you don't kind of have to use a calculator like this. Just, just for interest sakes, I reconstructed the program out of handwritten notes that I'd done at the time. And I've just published that onto GitHub for those that want to maybe plug it into a HP 41 CV like this emulator and just get it to work and do the same thing. But you can adjust it. Um, you know, if it's not an eight day cycle for the shifts, you could make it a nine day, a 10 day cycle and just adapt the code accordingly. It's, as I said, it's my first program I ever wrote. So it doesn't have uh, lots of error correction, error controls. You need to put the data in correctly. But today, I mean, you know, what I really wanted to say was is, you know, if you've got an itch or you've got needs a solution or you've got a problem that needs to be solved at work or even at home, it's the best way to learn a new computer language or a program. And I've followed that all through my career, really. I've always adapted programs. If I didn't have something new to write, I'd adapt something old I had, you know, from, say, Clipper into C++ or whatever the case is. So I'll just show you the sort of demo really, and the rest is really on the website. You can go look at some of my old handwritten notes and get an idea of what source code looks like for an HP 41 CV. So let's just turn it on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I see now it's on the 10th today, but I'm gonna be working from the, the 9th. Uh, how our shifts actually work, just as a matter of interest is it started with an afternoon shift, an afternoon shift, one morning shift. The following day, we'd call it a double up because you do a morning shift in the morning and the first night shift that same evening, then another night shift, and then you'd have one rest day off, another rest day off, another rest day off, and you'd start your afternoon shift again. So really, I've just numbered these from shift zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then starting again, shift zero, one, two, three, four. And really how the calculation works is it's going to go and calculate from the first date and the second date what the difference is. In other words, how many days between the two dates, and it just does a mod, which returns the remainder. And I'm doing a mod by eight because it's eight specific shift days, zero to seven. And the remainder would be in other words, today's date plus that if it was three. So if we were on shift three, for example, today and the remainder was three, it would actually mean, ah, oh, it's going to be shift six, which would be your second rest day, for example. So I'll give you an idea of how it works here. It'd be easier maybe if I just show it. So the 9th of December is going to be morning one. 
which is actually shift 012. So let's just execute. So this is a calculator. You turn it on if you want to execute an application. I've already typed it in. You're going to go to XEQ, which is execute. And because I've got a alpha label, I'm going to click alpha on and I'm going to, it's called shift. So I'll just do S H I. Oops. What did I do? S H I F T S shifts and then close alpha so it runs the program and it stopped at the prompt today's date this has been set up for american format so it was just the default so it's month dot day day year 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 so you'll see for for the ninth for the ninth i'm going to put in month 12 yes i know it's odd to many oops 12 I seem to be having a problem with a click here. Day 9, 20.022. You hit run stop at the bottom here to continue. It's going to ask for the next date. And I'm going to take, let's take Christmas Day. It should be the first morning. So it's going to be month again. 12. 25th to continue and it's going to ask now what is the shift number for today on 9th okay so it's going to be MRN as I said start 0 0 1 2 so we're on shift 2 I'll input 2 and hit run stop and it should be on Christmas Day, 25th, it should be a first morning shift. And if you look down here, yep, it's a first morning shift. And I can you know, just show that it does go over New Year as well. We can run. Let me just stop that. Let's start it again. Shifts. Oops, there we go. Let's do today again, the same day, the 9th. That'll be 12.092022. But now I'm going to take a date just sort of into next year. I'm going to take the 7th of January, which will be first month, 07.2022. And run today's shift again for the ninth is going to be the morning shift, so that'll be shift zero one two again. Run stop, and it is supposed to be yes, rest day three. So, yeah, that actually looks like it's all working fine. If you just wanted to get an idea, by the way, of what the code sort of looks like on the HP. I've put it into program mode. You'll see at the moment we are standing at label at line 84, label called just 08 here, and you can use SST to single step through the code. Uh, this is essentially what it's doing. Remember, this is a, a reverse Polish notation calculator. So how you're going to be entering numbers is going to be 1 plus 1 equals is actually going to be 1 enter 1 plus. So that is why you're seeing the order over here of these, how these calculations are appearing. But yeah, there's, there's label shifts. That's where the start of the application is. You can see there it's prompting for the alpha. The prompt is actually where it stops and now displays the, the text and asks for the input. It executes another little sub program called Cal. Uh, it stores what, what it gets back into register 10. It prompts for the next date. And there's the prompt and executes Cal again. Well, Cal, by the way, is just calculating the Julian date of the Gregorian calendar's date. So in other words, once I've typed that data in, Cal is actually going to convert it to a Julian day number. And I can subtract those two from each other to get the difference. That's in essence really how I'm doing it then with the mod. And yeah, as I said, that sort of got me going with my whole my whole career so yeah you don't believe me about the reverse knowledge polish notation have a look at this now so we can say 45 enter 
second number say 23 and I want to do what? I want to plus together and that's really how our RPN calculator works. A little bit different but very very powerful. You can build up, you don't need, you see there's no brackets for example, no parentheses are required or anything at all. You build your calculation out from the inside out and and that's how you do it. Uh, it was actually shown to be a lot faster and more powerful than the parentheses with the equal sign. But you know, there you have it. So that's really it. As I said, I'll put the link underneath and um, yeah, just food for thought. Like I said, if you are a, a budding developer, find a problem like this to solve. You'll get yourself sort of known within your organization as well, or even, you know, amongst your friends or whatever the case is. And also if you publish your code to GitHub, it's a type of thing today that becomes your CV as a developer. You say, that's my repositories of code that I've produced and you can go and have a look at the quality and what I do. So yeah, I hope it was sort of of some interest and hopefully it sparks some interest in some people to go and maybe do some coding and development. Very, very therapeutic. I can't paint pictures, but I can, I can write code. I should make that my bumper sticker. Anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoy the day further and stay safe out there.